Today, I'm going to talk about something that's relatable to every single dog owner on this planet, and that is challenges with your dog. Yes, everybody, every dog trainer out there, every professional, every pet owner has challenges. Yes, even Susan Garrett has challenges. The difference is my approach to the challenges, and that's what I'm going to share with you today. I'd like you to think about dog training challenges that you have currently with any of your dogs right now. Could it be not coming when they're called, especially like when you're at the park or away from home, or maybe it's chasing cars, chasing bicycles, or it could be stealing food from the garbage or the counter, or maybe it's just getting over the top, over aroused, or maybe you have a sport dog and you have a dog that just doesn't listen in the ring. They don't do what you expect of them in the ring. So you think of your own unique challenge and there are currently five dogs in this household, and I can name a challenge with any one of them. This is about how to make sure you fix your dog training challenges, how my approach to dog training problems is different than most people that I've met. First of all, you've got to decide, is this a problem you see every week? If you gave the dog the opportunity, maybe it would happen every day, or is it something that just every once in a while, like every six months or a year, if it really is not very frequent, then chances are your regular relationship building, your regular connecting with your dog will help overcome that problem. But most challenges don't happen that infrequently because if it's a challenge to you, likely the reciprocal part of that challenge is there's reinforcement for the dog. And what gets reinforced gets repeated. And so what I suggest is you go through this checklist whenever you are thinking about what is that challenge. Number one, does it matter? For example, Tater Salad came to us with this crazy habit of loving to jump into people's cars, preferably the front seat, but it could be the passenger seat. If a car door is open, he will like hightail it across the driveway and jump in the car. If the car door is not open, but the trunk is open, he'll jump in the trunk. If the trunk is not open and the doors aren't open, but the windows are open, that bulldog will jump through the window and he won't do anything. He just sits in the car. So it's a bit of an embarrassment at times, but not really because it's tater salad and I actually don't care. So I've never put any effort into trying to fix it. It is uniquely him and we just manage it by when somebody comes to deliver something, we say, you better close that car door when you're on your way up to the front porch. Okay. It's kind of comical. So we don't do anything about it. Unlike he also came with a habit of wanting to run away, preferably to the golf course across the road. Why? Because these little things called golf carts drove up and down the fairway. And so that we did have to fix. And so that was a concentrated training project that was something that we cared about. So question number one, does it matter? Question number two, I'd like you to evaluate the management and the crutches that you've been applying to this behavior up to now and be honest. So management would be, you always keep the dog on leash. The dog doesn't get freedom to rehearse the challenge. And quite often, this is what people do. They manage, 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 and then blindly trust because enough time has gone by that the memory of the bad behavior, what they call bad behavior is kind of fading. And so you blindly trust and you take off the leash and whoops, there he goes again over to the golf course. And so that approach can't happen. You've got to be conscientious of the management tools that you have been using and the crutches. I'll get to those later. And there needs to be a strategic approach to losing those management tools. It can't just be, well, I put in the training, let's see how it goes. That is not a strategy. That is a fool's bet really when it's your dog's best life that is dependent upon the best outcome here. So you need to evaluate when and where and how often you've been managing the behavior. Now, the management may also be verbal crutches from you. Things like, ah, ah, leave it, or hey, 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 or saying the dog's name, Tater. That's warning him of a threat that don't leave or else. Those crutches make the dog possibly behave when they're within an arm's reach of you, but possibly they are not 
when they are 100 feet or 50 feet or even 20 feet away from you. What we want is a dog who voluntarily wants to make the choice you want them to make because you've made the circumstances so reinforcing for him that he wants to make the right choice. All right. So evaluate the management and the crutches that you've been applying to life with that dog. Okay. Number three, let's do a deep dive into your journal. What's that you say? You haven't been writing notes and journaling about this issue. Okay. My friend, no time like the present because what we need to know is where the improvement's happening. There's an old saying, what you track improves. And so we need to track behavior. You're going to say, dog made great choice here. Write down all those good choices that you see the dog making and dog didn't make such a good choice here. And I want you to write what your emotions were when that happened. What were you thinking? What were you feeling? What were your thoughts? What were your emotions? What were your actions? And what did that leave you with a new belief about your dog? Because we need to evaluate this and all of that can go in a journal. Of course, we want to journal the good things that you did, that I played these games that led to these great choices in my dog. So we want to keep playing games and you could write those in a training log, but the journal is really about, we're focusing in on this one thing we want to fix. And why I like that is because we can flip back the pages. We are going to measure where you were last week and all of the things that you've done in between where you are this week. We're always heading towards getting rid of the management tools and of course, not using any crutches. You see, without the journal, what happens is we just tend to avoid those triggers that we know that our dog's going to make poor choices around. But that avoidance leads to the belief that the triggers are gone. And that's unfair to the dog because it creates this expectation in our head. And then what we decide is a poor choice. Then what may have been a, oh, wow, you know, I can't believe he did that turns into what did you do? Right? We get triggered in a bigger way if we aren't present to what we are thinking and feeling. And if we aren't present to what is the strategy we've taken to overcome those triggers. And that's why journaling is just so important. We need to know the direction we're heading. We need to know how far we've come. Journaling is just critical. The last thing I would like you to put on the journal every day is what did you learn from what happened? Remember, if you feel furious, time to get curious. And I think that is such a big part of being okay with wherever you are. For example, I felt frustrated, very, very frustrated. I was running my eight and a half year old dog momentum at an agility trial and she could not listen to my cues any run there was a seesaw involved. Now she came first or second in most of the other classes where there was no seesaw, but she's obsessed with a seesaw. Back in 2019, the last time we were at the world championships, I said to myself, wow, this seesaw obsession is getting a little out of hand. I may have to do some counter conditioning with it. But guess what I did? I did nothing because something called COVID hit and I just hoped it would be okay. Now, guess what happened? It doesn't get okay. It gets worse and worse and worse. Now she's an eight-year-old dog and I'm like, maybe we can get through her career without me having to do this extra work. Well, this year has proven to me, I'm going to have to do the work. So guess what I did? When I felt that frustration, I said, my dog doesn't deserve that. That was Sunday afternoon, Monday morning, I was out there training. And guess what I did? I did a simple little sequence and then I had Kim bang the seesaw off to the side and tried the sequence again and she couldn't do it. Ta-da, I've got a starting point. I'm so happy. Now I can work on incremental changes until I can have her at least lower that arousal state. You need to have a plan. You've got to journal your challenges, journal your successes, but most importantly, journal your emotions because I need you to get curious. So number one, you ask yourself, does it matter? Number two, you have to evaluate the management and crutches you've been doing. Number three, you're going to look at your journaling, brush off that journal, start it up again. Number four, I really want you to write down your emotions. 
I want you to feel gratitude for whatever challenges that your dog has brought to you, because that's going to allow you to open up a new life for your dog, a better life for the two of you, more connection, more opportunities to go new places, whatever anybody thinks. If somebody comes up to you and say, that dog was knocking bars, he's got to learn better. That dog just doesn't care. That dog's blowing you off. You have got to be able to say, smile, nod, and go back to what's important. Only thing that's important is what you think of your dog and what your emotions are telling you. And I've got to tell you, life is better when you see nothing but amazing things in your dog and you know your job is to just uncover them. Okay. The fifth thing I have for you is go back to podcast episode number 24, where I talk about the distraction intensity index. That is going to give you another great plan on how to work through these distractions that you may be handcuffed by right now. What can you change about the lens you're looking through your dog right now? So, His behavior doesn't frustrate you. It's just information. It's just feedback. It's just a compass to tell you where your training needs to go next.